Hey, Dave Oslin here. So we've got a lot of little quads on this ranch. We use them for work and fun, but we've got a little TRX 90 here that the kids ride around. They love to be part of all the action and work. So what we're gonna do is try to figure out how to make a hitch setup so this little rig right here can be part of the action. So I haven't found one anywhere, but I'm gonna sit, I looked at this and there's some places, obviously, I don't want to drill any new holes down in here or any place. There's a lot of action going on here. So besides that, I've got this little subframe up here. These bars, three quarter inch bar. I'm going to mount something off here. The kids aren't going to be pulling, you know, 800 pound logs out of here on a little trailer. But we just want to put a little trailer on this. And uh, so the kids can putz around, scoop poop. Pull a few log, pull a few little fire logs or something out of the woods with us. We've got the Honda Rancher here, put to use all the time, and it's got the utility trailer. Plan is to try to use some of these little conduit hangers to mount on that three quarter inch subframe and uh, put some straps off of that to hold up a little trailer receiver. So I've tried to dry fit with these hangers. On the left side, pretty not bad, a lot of room. The right side, pretty crowded. I may utilize this bolt that helps hold the muffler in place to make a strap that comes down here to the hitch receiver. Back bar is plenty of room here. I'll probably put double ones here. Rather than getting carried away with fabrication, went down to, I admit it, Harbor Freight Tool, 12 bucks. 12 bucks, maybe 15, I don't know. But, you know, rather than fabricating one, I don't, I don't have a drill big enough to do that. I have to go out and buy special bits for some of these great big bits. Um, yeah, so just cutting little corners, buying some pre-made pieces here. Fabricated a little mounting bracket, some 10 gauge steel, which is 0.1345, four inches by one inches with a couple of quarter inch plus holes for mounting bolts. Holes in it. Now I want to clean these edges up. My trusty belt grinder. Another weapon of choice, my DeWalt cutoff saw for steel, obviously, with a carbide blade rather than a carburetor blade that grinds through. These cut through, they last pretty good. If you abuse them, they won't. Some people think literally these things called chop boxes. These things called chop boxes is what they are, but you just want to ease your way through the material. One of my favorite tools here in the shop, my belt grinder. So this is the bolt I took out of that muffler mount. I'm gonna mount it like this, but you can see this comes straight down. I gotta put a little bend to offset this down towards the center of the ATV. I'll just put a little bit of bend in this thing because chances are I don't want to overbend it. 
That might be enough. So here's where I'm at right now. I cut this a little long because I can always cut it shorter than having to put it on the stretcher. So I'll do a little dry fit here. This is a 3 16th by one inch piece of regular old A36 hot rolled steel, also known as mild carbon steel or common steel. Probably 85% of the stuff in the world is of this caliber of steel. So the idea is fitting these on here and have another strut coming out here. I'll weld this on, but I can have this come out here now to pick up the receiver down below. See, I can turn this at any angle I want. Weld this other piece of strap. These will come down and catch the receiver. That's the idea. You know, I'm just shooting from the hip here. I may get to three quarters of the way through there and realize this ain't happening. We'll find out. I've decided I don't like these, this hook that came on this little hitch adapter, so I'm gonna take my angle grinder, find out how good these Harbor Freight welds actually are, cut this thing off. Yeah, if you don't have an angle grinder, grab yourself one of these, maybe five, six, or seven of them. You can't have enough of them. The idea now is to weld this thing on here, square and level. Got a little look at this thing. Like that. I'm going to put a couple tack, few tack welds here just to hold everything in place. And if I like it, I can weld it all up. If I don't, I can just pop them apart and pop them off and reconnoiter. Taken a couple of tries, had to pop it, pop this loose a couple times, tweak it around, twist this a little bit. So now it's square, level both ways, front and back, side to side. And now I need to get a vertical piece from here down to here for some additional support. So now I'm hoping the final chapter in this, I've got this little piece of uh, metal cut with a hole drill in it. I want to take this angle iron, slight bevel on it to match this thing, put it up to here, weld it onto here, weld it here. I'm going to cut this right here. bit of extra racing in here. Okay, I pulled the thing loose. I'm just going to go along and reinforce all my welds now. Watch your eyes. Clean the welds up again, angle grinder, this time a flap disc, 40 grit flap disc. Good stuff.
I think I'm finally about ready for paint. It's welded up. Took a flap disc, cleaned it up a little bit. I'm gonna paint it with some hammered finish black paint. Okay, let's take this little unit, start installing it again. Let's look at it. Dang. I believe that may take care of it. I'll find a little lightweight dump trailer so the kids can drive around the ranch here and be part of the goings on around here.